Hello, welcome to another gloomy day in London. Do you remember last month when I said, maybe next month I won't have any books to review? Well, here we are. I've had a very difficult month. Um, it started with me moving studio, which was a lot. Um, my boyfriend lost his job, which was a lot. My stepmom died, which continues to be a lot. And next week I am moving house and I have a funeral and then I also have, I'm speaking at a conference which I haven't prepared for and the week after that I'm speaking at another conference which I also haven't prepared for which is in Berlin. So haven't had a lot of time for reading this month. As I said in my last video, the last week of last month I didn't read at all and same with the first week of this month and I was like I need to get back into it, I'll pick something that's quite short that I know I can just zip through um, and I picked Plan for Chaos by John Wyndham. Uh, John Wyndham is one of my favourite authors. He wrote The Day of the Triffids and The Crack and Wakes and The Chrysalids and some other book. What's the other book he's really famous for? Where are you? They're all in different places. Midwitch Cuckoos, he wrote. So I've read like five of his books. I um, thought this would be just a, a quick and easy one. And it is about um, a man who is married to his cousin or is betrothed to his cousin. Um, and he's a journalist and basically he finds a lot of um, women have died recently that look exactly like his um, partner and uh, yeah it's some like bioengineering shit. I got 20, 32 pages in and then I was like mm, don't really feel like reading this. It was good but it just it, I, I wasn't having the pace of it so we gave up on that. Um, and then the next book I picked up was when I was going to Dublin. I've also been away this month. God, it's been a month. Um, and I, yeah, I picked up this book, Life in the Garden by Penelope Lively. This is about gardening, but kind of entwined with famous writers and their gardens and how gardening has influenced their writing and, and, and vice versa. Um, so it starts by talking about Virginia Woolf and her life. Also, it's some really nice little illustrations, uh, illustration pages every chapter. Come on, where are you? They make me really happy. Um, I was really into the idea of this, but the trouble is I just don't know enough about gardening to enjoy this book. It's, it's one of those things that name drops a lot of stuff and to the people that know the things, it would be really too much if she explained every single plant she mentioned so don't blame her for um just like rattling off names of plants and flowers and stuff do blame myself for not knowing any of them um and i just didn't i didn't think i'm basically i'm gonna get really good at gardening and then i'm gonna come back to this book and really enjoy it um but right now i didn't think it was worth me committing to it when i either had to like look up five things a page Oh, like it's just less enjoyable that way. So I got to page 24 on that. So that's total 56 pages so far this month. Next book I read, which I did complete, um, is Lust Caution by Eileen Chang. I picked this for my book club. Um, Eileen Chang was a, she was around in like the 50s, 60s. Hold on. She was born in 1920 and died in 1995. Um, so she was born to an aristocratic family in Shanghai. So this is actually a book of short stories that all take place in Shanghai under um, Japanese control, I guess, would it be fair to say? Um, so this has been, this is really interesting. I found it really interesting. The titular story, Last Caution, is about um, a woman who has to seduce this uh, high up in the government businessman to assassinate him, but has feelings and is it like quite interesting, but there are six stories in total five stories in here um, and they're all mostly kind of about the mundanity aside the first one which is about like murder um, the rest of them are pretty like one takes place just in a uh, monsieur's doctor's waiting room um, one is just about like uh, sister sisterly jealousy of um, their brother getting married to a woman like they're they're all quite mundane but I feel like it gave a really nice look into um, what life was like in Shanghai then. Uh, so my friends that I read this with did not like it because they're not used to reading short stories so they just didn't feel like you could get in um, into them but I, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, can't be asked to do a whole video on it though, can I? No? Too busy. 
And then I did read a whole novel, um, Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I read this twice before, both times as audiobooks, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I just, I felt like I was in the right headspace to read this. Um, it was before my stepmom died, uh, unexpectedly, so this was interesting to read about mental spirals when you're having some mental spirals. Um, but actually I do not have any mental health issues <laughs> at all comparable to Aza in this story. Uh, so this is about a 16 year old girl called Aza, um, and her struggles, um, with, with thought spirals and obsessive thinking, um, and is really fantastic. I just, I, I, I liked, I like it a lot. I don't like her as a character. I don't even really care about the plot. Um, but the way some, some things are described, uh, descriptions about our place in the world as, as, as humans and our relations, relationship with our own physical body and mind and I'm not describing this very well, but um, I really loved it. And um, yeah, I think it's just one of those ones I wanted to pick up every couple of years and reread because there's something like quite affecting and centering about it. Um, so yeah, it's really good. But I've already read it before, so I've already talked about it on video. I was going to do a full one, but again, can't be asked. Um, I, after I finish this, I'm going to pack up all of my books and take this lovely shelf to my studio. So my new flat will not have this shelf. I've got the plan for what I, how I'm going to build the bookshelves in my new flat. Um, I'm not sure if that will happen in the next month. I guess we'll see. I'll see you at the end of November or the start of December for, um, I hope, I, you know what, I can't even, I can't dare to hope that I'll have time to read in the next month, but we'll see, maybe. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> see you soon, bye.